Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again. If you guys have been uh, checking out a lot of the technology websites and uh, you've been checking out probably our uh, Facebook and Twitter posting, you've probably seen a lot of information about a new GPU. And uh, that's what we're actually going to be talking about, the brand new GTX 650 Ti Boost Edition. This isn't to be confused with the previous GTX 650 Ti, but an all new part uh, with actually some new modifications in terms of clock performance, as well as uh, some changes on the VRAM side and a couple other tweaks in there that really actually introduce a whole new level of gaming for you guys that are out there interested in PC gaming. So with that, like always, we're going to talk a little bit about the architecture, talk a little bit about the performance, talk about how it affects you guys that are looking to build a system. Uh, what makes it different than the previous generation, uh, or actually technically same generation, um, 650Ti non-boost edition, is one big difference, which is going to be the memory bus. It's been bumped up to 192 memory uh, bit in terms of the interface, and then they've also gone ahead and added more memory. So we have two gigabytes versus one gigabyte. We have that increased memory bus, and then we also have a higher clock speed with the boost technology incorporated. Uh, when you kind of throw that all together, you really actually introduce a whole nother level of gaming performance, which actually allows the card to be significantly faster uh, than the 650 Ti. So where the previous 650 Ti was a capable card, you know, at 680, uh, 1680 by 1050, and even I'd say moderate 1080p uh, gaming level, um, the 650 Ti Boost Edition is really centered for people that want to be able to step up from previous generation cards. Now for us, we've made some other changes to the card. Uh, you can actually take a look here and you can see that the base clock speed and the boost clock speed for the reference card um, are a little bit lower than the card that we're going to be shipping to the market. We have uh, the GTX 650 Ti Boost Edition OC. We'll only have one version of this card available to you guys and it's going to be priced $5 above the MSRP. Um, so instead of a $170 price point, you're looking at $175. Um, but our card is actually going to be overclocked. We're going to be shipping it with a 1085 uh, core clock in terms of the boost clock speed. And because of our superior thermal design, you're going to see that actually going uh, comfortably over uh, that frequency. So generally going to be over 1.1 one, uh, 1 .1 gigahertz. So you can see here, um, you know, all the current titles that really a lot of us are interested in terms of playing and seeing what the card is a capable to perform at. We've got things like Battlefield 3, Assassin's Creed 3, Crisis 3, Borderlands 2, Max Payne 3, Far Cry 3, and even uh, some other titles I've tried out like Tomb Raider, all offer you very, very comfortable levels of gaming performance. In many situations, you're seeing uh, you know, frame rate close to about 40 frames a second with, of course, great frame latency um, because of the tuning NVIDIA is done within the driver stack, with some other titles even eclipsing over to uh, 40 frames. And keep in mind, of course, that this is only with a reference series card. With our card, you're going to even get a little bit faster performance because of the overclocking that we have uh, on our card. And on top of that, if you're even able to push the performance a little bit further through overclocking, um, then you can even go ahead and increase this a little bit more. And then you phase that in with, of course, the continued driver work that NVIDIA will do along with game developers and patching performance. And you can be talking, of course, a couple more percentage points. Overall, it really leaves you with a card that's quite capable. And also for you guys that are interested in multi-GPU setups, uh, the scaling performance is outstanding for this card. So you could literally be talking between 75 to 90% scaling in many of these game engines if you want to go ahead and throw a secondary GTX 650 Ti Boost Edition card in there and go ahead and be running an SLI. So with that, let's go ahead and actually take a look at our card. Um, so right off the bat, you're going to see that we actually have our DirectCU2 design, which for a lot of you guys, uh, it's the second generation, which essentially means that there's two fans like always. Um, these fans right here actually feature our dustproof design, so it's actually a double sealed assembly internally on the hub. So that means that any type of dust, debris, or dander that gets inside of there uh, won't actually be able to get inside there. So it won't be able to affect the ability for the actual fan to be able to rotate. So that helps to ensure better long-term reliability, cooling performance, and long-term operation. Uh, in addition to that, we've also really spent a lot of time to have the fan curve and the vBIOS carefully tuned so that you really have almost a near silent level of operation from the card. Um, you know, when you can tag the up together with, of course, uh, the actual thermal design where we have the two heat pipes making direct contact with the GPU to have that great conduction and dissipation ability, you're also going to have great thermal performance. Okay, guys, so you can see that we've actually gone ahead and unscrewed the card. Um, you can see that we actually have four screws right here, very basic in terms of actually being able to go ahead and get into the card, um, whether it's something that you want to be able to go ahead and clean it, uh, whether you want to apply your own thermal compound, whatever it might be, it's a very simple and easy process. So you can see right here, we have our high performance direct copper heat pipes. So of course, these are nickel plated to make sure that we don't have any type of oxidation to make sure that we get maximum performance. 
And then, you, of course, you have the two heat pipes uh, in there, the thermal compound that direct makes direct contact. So overall, that wraps up kind of giving you the perspective on the direct CO2 heatsink design. So let's take a look here at the actual PCB and the board itself. So uh, in terms of the PCB and the board itself, you can see we have a beautiful matte black finish, so it looks really nice. Um, but we also, of course, continue to use our full non-reference power solution. So first off the bat, we're going to have our high performance um, capacitors on here. And these are our super alloy capacitors, which are part of our super alloy power power implementation. Um, these are actually 5K rated, so that's actually twice the industry standard. On competitors' cards and reference solutions, you're only going to have capacitors that are rated at 2K operation. So these essentially have over twice the lifespan. On top of that, we have our super alloy chokes. Uh, these are high performance, fully sealed inductors. So they help to give you the best power output, better thermal efficiency, and overall better performance. Um, one other side benefit is, is that along with our carefully tuned fan curve, which is really quiet, a fully sealed inductor also helps to minimize on any what's sometimes referred to as coil whine. Uh, so the card is not going to have that kind of like this chirping or whining that can occur sometimes under gaming load. So that's another nice touch point. Uh, and lastly, rounding out, of course, we have our super alloy power MOSFETs, which are right there, which also help to drive power for the card and have higher voltage thresholds and output ability. So ultimately, what that translates into all together is going to be giving you better power delivery so you get better stability, better lifespan, better performance, and better overclockability. So now we want to talk about biggest question we usually get from you guys is, you know, is, is this card right for me? And, you know, what should I be considering if I'm maybe building a new PC right now? And for you guys that are trying to kind of figure that out, the great thing is this card actually really works well at different configurations uh, and different form factors and different segmentations. So here's a, a great example. Here we have our P8Z77-V. So this is uh, a great uh, kind of more value-oriented um, motherboard that we have on our Z77 lineup. Still very feature-rich and even supports um, SLI. Because it's not a large card, you still get a huge amount of actually airflow considerations, a lot of flexibility, and the two-slot design still allows you to go ahead and have additional breathing room. Now with that, of course, we can move over to something that's, say, like a micro-ATX solution. Maybe you're looking for a small form factor gaming box. You still want to be able to have a high level of performance, uh, more upgradability in terms of maybe you want to add in a uh, wireless solution. Maybe you want to add in a better quality sound card. Uh, you want still a lot of flexibility in terms of memory upgrading. It still would entirely make a great fit here as well. No issues in terms of a small form factor gaming system, still a great level of performance. For you guys on kind of that other end of the spectrum, looking for really kind of the smallest level of systems on small form factor side, it's really a perfect complement here, is that even with uh, those smaller size chassis, you can still see here that, well, definitely it's, of course, it's a little bit wider than the, the motherboard. Um, you know, for you guys that are looking at chassis like the Cooler Master Elite, the Bit Phoenix Prodigy, um, Fractal's Node series, it would fit in here no problems. The low TDP is great because you could keep a small, very efficient power supply in there. Um, even go with maybe a passively based power supply. You don't need to be putting out a lot of heat. The low operating temperature as well is going to be minimizing the type of airflow considerations you're going to have to have and a more compressed type of chassis configuration. But you're still going to be able to get really great gaming performance. So um, overall, whether you're going with a full ATX, micro ATX, or even mini ATX solution, 650 Ti Boost Edition is going to be a great choice for you. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up. As you guys have seen, it's a really capable card, especially at the price point that it's coming at, $175 for a card that's offering you essentially high quality image settings at 1080p in all modern generation game engines, uh, along with being able to take advantage of the GeForce Experience program, which can make those auto optimizations for you and popular game titles. Really makes this a sweet spot card for you guys that are looking for a great upgrade, whether you're at, you know, two years ago, three years ago based GPU, or you're looking to build a brand new system right now and being able to try to throw something in there that's going to be able to give you strong gaming performance and all the titles you want, as well as still give you that flexibility to have improved performance and gameplay you know, for the titles that are coming out down the road, whether it's this year or next year. Um, so with that, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, we'd love to see them here on the page. Uh, drop them in the YouTube comments. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please make sure and subscribe. And if you have any other uh, feedback you'd love to throw away, you can make sure to hit us up at ASUS North America Facebook page or our ASUS North America Twitter page. So as always, thank you guys for watching.